This is Miss Muscarella coming at you with section 6-4 to 6-5, proving triangles similar by angle angle, side side side, and side angle side. Now these are three of your similarity postulates, and they're pretty large. So what we're going to do is go ahead, I'm going to give you those three right here, and that's a lot of information to write. So go ahead, take your time, write all three of those down, and then we'll come back and we'll apply each one of those. So go ahead and hit pause and I'll see you in a few minutes. Now when you take a look at each one of these you have to pay very close attention to the symbol because the symbol in each one of these is not the same symbol as the congruent symbol. So when you write a similarity statement where here in the first one for angle angle it says triangle KJL is similar to triangle YXZ you really got to pay attention to that symbol because a lot of times students will make the mistake and they'll write the symbol there incorrectly. So just make sure you take your time and that you don't do that. Now let's take a look at our first example here as we apply some of these. Now it says determine if the two triangles are similar if they are write a similarity statement. So one of the first things that I want to do is actually just find the missing angles because I have two angles in each triangle. I've got a 26 right here and this little box you know means 90. So this missing angle right here, angle E, 90 minus 26 gives me 64. Now that's the same as angle H over here in the other triangle and I also have this 90 degree angle, angle G and angle D that are both the same in each triangle. Now just because I can, I want to go ahead and find angle K over here. And again, if I do 64 from 90, then that's going to go ahead and give me 26 for this angle. So I've got my pick of angles that I can take a look at. But when I take a look at all three different similarity statements, I could use angle angle similarity. I could use side 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 similarity. Or I could use side angle side similarity. Well, in this diagram, I've got two angles that are congruent, so then that means the triangles are going to be similar. So then my similarity statement, when I go ahead and write that, I'll say triangle C, D, E, and I have to use a similar symbol, not the congruent symbol, is similar to triangle. Now, when I go ahead and write the other one, make sure that you get the angles correct on this, because angle C is 26. So that means angle K is going to be the one that has to start that off. Then I go to my 90 degree angle which is G and then lastly angle H. So that's one of my similarity statements. I could have those three letters of each one of them mixed up as long as they correspond together. So C has to go with K, D has to go with G, and E has to go with H. So they have to be in that same order. So for example I could write it another way. I could write it say like this. E, D, C is similar. Now since E is in the first line then that would mean that H has to be in that first spot in the other one, and K would be last. So that's another way you could write a similarity statement for it. And that's all you have to do to write a similarity statement. Just make sure that your angles are correctly set up. Now, for examples 2 and 3, it says show that the two triangles are similar, then write a similarity statement. Well, I've got in uh, this first diagram right here, I've got angle... This angle right here is 52, and this other angle down in here is 52. So I know both of those angles are the same. Now, one angle that is shared by both of these is this angle right up in here, angle A. And of course, we know from the reflexive property that any angle is going to be congruent to itself. So I've got the two angles that I need to make a similarity statement. So triangle ABE would be similar to triangle ACD by the A, A angle angle similarity postulate. Now for example number three we're going to go ahead and take a look at each one of our angles here. Now on the other side of angle F we know that those two are make a line so they're a linear pair. If one of these is 90 then that means the other side has to be 90. So I'm going to go ahead and find the missing angle in each one of them. Now 32 degrees is here and this angle F is 90 so my other angle up in here has got to be, let's see, 90 minus 32. When I subtract those two, I end up with 58. So that angle is 58. So I already have two angles, and that's all I need to use the angle-angle similarity statement. So triangle CDF is similar to triangle 
DEF by the angle-angle similarity postulate. And that's all there is for, to these three examples. Now here for example number four, this is a very common problem where you have a flagpole casting a shadow. Now in this case the flagpole casts a shadow 50 feet long and at the same time a woman standing nearby who is 5 feet 4 inches tall casts a shadow that is 40 inches long. How tall is a flagpole to the nearest foot? You'll see this kind of problem all the time and one of the key things on this is drawing a picture. Now there's a couple different ways that you can draw the picture. One of them is going to be like this. So up here would be, this would be my flagpole. Alright, so my flagpole is right here. Now, I, I'm told that the flagpole casts a shadow, so my shadow is going to be down here on the bottom. Now the shadow is 50 feet long. And at the same time, a woman standing nearby is 5 feet 4. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the lady right here. And she's, I know, 5 feet 4. And she's casting a shadow, so her shadow has a length of 40 inches. So when you go to do this drawing, you're going to go ahead and set your drawing up just like this. Now, the part that I'm trying to find is going to be the height of the flagpole. I don't know that, so I'm just going to call that X, which would be denoted right over here by this piece. Now, when you set up your proportion, you've got a couple of different ways that you could set this up. And the way that I'm going to set it up is going to be the height of the flagpole, which I don't know that, so that's going to be X feet to the shadow of the flagpole, which I know is 50 feet. So I'm going to set those two in proportion, and then I know that the height of the lady is 5 feet 4 inches tall, so that's 5 foot 4, and then her shadow is 40 inches. Things that you'll notice is that on the left side both of the units are in feet and on the right side I've got 5 feet 4 inches so I'm going to have to change 5 foot 4 into inches. Now to do that you're going to have to know that there are 12 inches in a foot so if I have 12 inches in one foot and I want to change that to 5 feet so I want to know how many inches are in 5 feet so I'm going to just multiply that by 5. And that's going to give me 60 inches. So 5 feet is 60 inches, but I'm 5 foot 4 for this lady, so she's going to be 64 inches tall. Now from here, you guys should know how to handle this. This is just a proportion where you cross multiply and divide. So go ahead and take your time, set that up correctly, and show your multiplying and then go ahead and come back and see what you come up with for an answer. Now when you do get your answer don't forget reread the question and answer the question in a complete sentence. So go ahead hit pause, show your work, figure out the rest of its answer and then see what you got when you come back. So how'd you do with that? Hopefully you showed you your work correctly and you came up with a height of 80 feet. Now don't forget write a sentence when you're done the flagpole is 80 feet tall and that sentence should answer the question. So make sure that you do that last step because you always want to answer your question in a complete sentence. Now let's take a look at our next example, example number five. Now here in example number five, we're asking if either triangle DEF or GHJ is similar to triangle ABC. So anytime we're taking a look at this, we can kind of, we're given the information up front where we have the side lengths of each one of our triangles. So one of the important things here is that anytime you're using side, 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 you always want to make a comparison between the shortest sides, the longest sides, and then the remaining sides, or what I like to call the medium side. So we're just going to be comparing sides here. Now in our, in our diagram here, it's kind of nice because they're already color coded for us. The shortest sides in each one of our triangles are red, and then our medium sides are going to be green, and then our longest sides are going to be blue. Now for my students who might be colorblind, that's not easy for you to see, so you're just going to have to analyze what each one of those numbers are. And so here, from A to B, you can definitely tell that that's your smallest side. From A to C, that part is going to be your longest side, and then the remaining side, or what I like to call you know, the medium side, that one is the leftover side. So again, go ahead and write small, medium, and large next to each one of the side lengths. That way you make sure that you've got all the pieces correctly set up for your proportions, which we'll write in a couple moments. Now that we've got all of those labeled, what I want to do first is go ahead and test out 
the ratio of my shorter sides for triangle DEF with triangle ABC. So triangle ABC, I've got my shorter side is AB, and my short side on triangle DEF is DE. So what I want to do is just find that ratio, and that's a ratio of 8 over 6. When I reduce that, I get down to 4 over 3. So that's the ratio of the shortest sides. Next, I'm going to move over to the longest sides for those two triangles. And my longest side is going to be AC on triangle ABC. And then on triangle DEF, it's going to be side DF. Now that's going to give me a ratio of 16 to 12. And when I reduce that, I end up with that same value again, 4 thirds, because 4 divides evenly into both 16 and 12. Now, here's a common mistake. People will sometimes look at the first two and go, oh, well, I picked the shorter side and the longest sides, and both of those ratios are the same, so the medium side must be the same. Always take it to that last step, because sometimes uh, there will be different standardized tests which try and get you to leave out that, that last step, and that's a common error for a lot of students to do. So. Don't be that person. Make sure you see it all the way through and do the ratio of the last piece. So the last side, we've got BC to side EF. And when I have those, I'm going to have the ratio of 12 over 9. Well, 3 goes into both of those evenly, so that's my greatest common factor. And 3 goes into 12 four times and 9 three times. Now, what you're going to do next is compare all three ratios. And what you want, if all three ratios are the same, which in this case they are, then those two triangles are going to be similar by the side-side-side similarity theorem. So what you're going to do then is just write your similarity statement that involves those two triangles. All right, so that's how we would write our similarity statement. We would just simply say, since AB to DE equals AC to DF equals BC to EF equals four-thirds, Triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF by side, side, side similarity. You go ahead and do the next piece on your own. You're going to do the same exact thing, but this time with triangle GHJ to triangle ABC. So go ahead, do the same thing, compare the shorter sides, the longest sides, the medium sides, and see if those ratios are indeed all the same. If they are, write a similarity statement, and if they're not, explain why that those triangles are not similar. Go ahead and hit pause, and then come back and see how well that you did. So how did you do with this one? Hopefully you got AB to GH being 8 over 8, which reduces to 1. AC to GJ is 16 over 16, and that also reduces 1. However, BC and HJ, when you simplify that, you only end up with a ratio of 6 over 5. Now your statement, which you have to write, because this is your reasoning, you're going to say, since the ratios of the three sides are not the same, the triangles are not similar. All right, now, here in example six, we've got to find a value of x that makes the two triangles similar, a, b, c, and d, e, f. Now, what I like to do is kind of highlight the corresponding sides, so that way it's easier for me to keep track of which sides and which numbers and which expressions that I'll be working with. So, in each one of these triangles, what you want to do is analyze to see where are their numbers in the same slot in both triangles, which in this case would be the same color. So I'm going to use side AB and side DE to help me out with both of these. Now, AB to DE, so I'm going to write down that. Now, if I want to use that to help me find the BC side, so BC, and then that corresponds with side EF. So when you write your proportion down, don't get lazy and just start putting numbers in. Actually write the, the letters that correspond to the sides that go along with it. Once you've got that set up, you'll be less likely to make a mistake. So we're going to have to do this twice. We're going to do it once to find uh, our variable for side BC. And when we do that, that's just going to look like this. And I think you guys can go ahead and probably do this on your own. If you want to do it together, that's great. We'll go ahead and do that. But if you think you got it, you can either hit pause and then fast forward and see what you came up with. Now, AB to DE, that's just pretty straightforward stuff. So we just have 4 there and 12 there. And then BC and EF, when we put those together, so BC is X minus 1 and EF has a length of 18. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do two steps here at once. Now this is a spot where most people will make the mistake. They'll try and jump and do this step in your head. And depending on where you are algebraically, you might be okay with that. Now 4 times 18, that gives me 72. 
Now here's where you have to be really careful. 12 times x is 12x. But the main mistake people make is they forget to distribute it to the other term. So 12 times 1, I end up with 12. So you end up with this for your next part of your equation. Now when you add 12 to both sides, you'll get 84 is 12x. And then when you divide both sides by 12, you end up with 7 for a value of x. So that's what I get for a value of x. Now, what I want to do, if the two triangles are similar, then I should get the same value on the other one. So what I'm going to do is plug in 7 for x. So 7 minus 1, I end up with just 6 for this piece. So bc has a length of 6. And then the other part, when I plug in 7 here, so I'm going to have 3 times 7 plus 1. Now 7 plus 1 is 8 times 3, so df, so that whole part is going to be 24. So what I need to do next is just make sure that everything is proportional. So let's kind of play around with this for a little bit here. It's AB to DE, BC to EF, and AC to DF. And what we want to do is make sure that they all reduce to the same value, which in this case, they do. They all reduce down to one-third. So we've got to double check to make sure that they all do reduce to the same value. And if they do, then that value of X that we found, 7, is correct in making our two triangles similar. If we came up with something different than one-third for one of those components, then our triangles would not be similar. So in this case, when we plugged in seven, it worked and our two triangles are similar. Now here for our last example, example number seven says, tell what method you would use to show that the triangles are similar. So we've got to actually list just so we can kind of keep track of. We've got angle-angle similarity postulate. We've got side angle side similarity theorem, and then we have our side 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 similarity theorem. So what we're going to do is kind of analyze our picture and take a look at it. Now, this angle right in here, I know these two angles are going to be congruent because they're vertical angles. So those two angles are definitely the same. Now, I don't know anything else about any of the other angles, so I can eliminate angle angle because you need to have two angles for that. If I look at the side lengths, I'm only given two on each triangle. I have 9 and 18 for triangle ABC, and I've got 15 and 30 for triangle DEF. So that tells me that side, side, side is going to be out. But don't just jump right to side angle side and say, okay, that's definitely our method, because even though it looks like it, we still have to check out the proportions to make sure that those are going to be the same proportion. So what I want to do first is go ahead and take a look at my shorter sides for each one of them. And in this case, I've got BC as a short side on triangle ABC and the shorter side on triangle CDE is definitely side DC. So my short side has a ratio of 9 to 15. When I reduce that down, I end up with 3 going into each one of those. So 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 15 divided by 3 gives me 5. So that gives me a ratio of 3 fifths. Now what I want to do next is compare my longest sides. Now my longest side is AC for the smaller triangle and definitely DE for my larger triangle. So now I'm going to go ahead and compare these two guys and I've got 18 to 30. When I reduce that, I'm going to end up with, because 6 goes into both of these, so 6 goes into 18 three times and 6 goes into 35 times. Since both of those are the same ratio, so side angle side would be the correct technique I would use to show that these two triangles are similar and that's it. That's all you got to do. Not too hard. We use ratios all over the place in real life. So this is going to be something that we're going to do a lot of is just compare and make sure that things are proportional. Now, thank you for watching this. This is all there is to this particular section, this note sheet on 64 to 65, proving triangles similar by angle angle, side side side, and the side angle side similarity postulates and or theorems. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. Peace.